Yeah. Networking is all about building relationships and the fact that you are here today is a testament to your commitment to your personal and professional. It's my honor to extend a warm welcome to our very special guest, Bhuvana Subramanian. We are incredibly fortunate to have her here today to share her expertise with us. Bhuvana is a marketing and communication professional with 27 years of experience across industries. She brings both career and life knowledge to the table. She mentors at least six girls every year. She's not just a leader in her field, but also a true expert in the art of networking. Her experiences, insights, and wisdom have, have the potential to enrich our understanding of the networking landscape and inspire us all. So let's make the most of this opportunity. Let's connect, collaborate, and leave here today with a renowned sense of purpose and a stronger network than ever before. Thank you, Bhuvana, for gracing us with your presence. We are eager to learn from you about the power of networking. Let's dive into the session with enthusiasm and an open mind. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Suganya and Shubha, for setting that lovely context. And yes, I uh, before we move to the actual session, I learned about networking, uh, I would say, the hard way and on my job. Right. Initially, I thought being an individual contributor is great and, uh, you know, my work will speak for itself. And that's the notion we all get into our careers with. And uh, that proved, uh, no, I mean, the work was recognized, but when I needed help and when, when I expanded into roles and when I took up leadership positions, uh, that's when I realized the power of networking. And uh, while I give you some context to the theoretical part of it today, but I'll also share my own experiences so that you benefit from uh, what I have learned. Uh, and uh, we we will see a, what a few videos which will also, you know, kind of make it lighter, but at the same time set the right context for you. But we'll start with a poll. Uh, Sugunya, over to you. Yeah, we'll launch a poll now. Parisha, can you launch the poll? If all of you can participate, it will give us the right view to what we're really looking at. So we can see at least 50% participated in the poll. Yes. So I request everyone to participate. Somebody is not able to view the poll. Kartika is not able to view the poll. For those who are able to view the poll, kindly go to the end, uh, to the extreme right hand side. You will have three dots. Click on those and you should be able to uh, check the poll. Uh, after whiteboard, the three dots which has more, click on that. You might have the poll option. We'll just give it another 30 seconds. Again, so good, yeah, so that we kind of have time for that. So it is very interesting to see that provided insights about company culture and job expectations is got as equal is the highest, in fact, at this point in time, or offered referrals or recommendations, which definitely is one key aspect of uh, you know building your network. Uh, connected me with relevant job leads. Yes, that's not that's not the actual goal of networking, right? I mean, while that can be a side effect or you know incidental to your networking opportunities, but that kind of happens if and when you're looking at jobs or changing jobs. You're looking at references. You're looking at referrals. Uh, then it becomes more relevant. Improve my interview skills through networking interactions. That's something that I will say that you can make use of your networking, uh, you know, network. In fact, you can make use of the leaders 
that are there or the recruiters in your network to kind of improve upon that interview skills because it's becoming harder and harder uh, right for interviews to, for people to get through interviews because it's changing you when you when you ask many questions on how to get through certain positions you will get different answers which will help you in your interview skills as well and which is what i think afh is also doing in this series that you know touching upon different aspects of job readiness in which interview skills is also one of the key things networking hasn't significantly impacted my job search and we will probably by the end of the session we'll see how that can be improved right so this is really nice thank you for participating i will start you can stop the poll uh, for you So when you see what is networking, I'm not going to get into the definition and scientific definition of it, but there is an art and science to networking, right? The art is about your emotions and your connections and how you really kind of relate to the person, whereas the science is how do you measure, how do you go about it programmatically? You know, there are so there is two different aspects, like there is two different aspects to your life itself. So that's what you need to understand uh, when uh, I think the poll is still on the screen, Parisha. Uh, at least I can see. No, that. I closed it. Maybe you need to close it from your end. Oh. Your screen it is there. I already end the poll. Okay. This one. Okay. I think I do. But uh, the main question to answer is networking, the means to an end in today's world. Uh, I would say, yes, it is, right? Because without another person, uh, even if you build relationships, I would say in the friend circle or officials uh, networking, it is definitely a means to an end. You need to know somebody even to get an entry into an organization. You need to have some reference. You need to have some context uh, to the job that you're applying for or when you're you know trying to improve your network or include somebody into your network on LinkedIn you need to be able to set context you can't just say hello and leave it yesterday in fact I was reading uh, I don't know how many of you know Ganesh Balakrishnan of uh, Flatheads he had put up a post uh, you know he's a shark tank fame uh, famous person he had put up a post as to how you know people just say hello and leave it there they don't want to set context. They don't want to say what they really want to say. It's like a mystery. Just one hi and then they're waiting for the other person to respond. Sometimes the other person is busy or they're not looking at LinkedIn chats all the time, right? So what happens is this hello goes into, you know, the other's folder and then automatically moves into remove network, which is painful, right? Which is painful for both parties. You've made an effort to connect. The other person wants to connect, but you're not able to connect because you're not introducing yourself properly. You're not, not introducing your context properly to the other person. If you put in your message properly, you put you keep, I would, I always recommend templatize and keep it ready. Like templatize it. If you're looking for job, keep a template. If you're looking for, let's say, referrals, keep a template. If you're just looking for something else, for example, I run a podcast and I often reach out to people on LinkedIn. So I have a template that, that has the link of the podcast, that has the names of other people who have, you know, uh, featured in my podcast and everything ready so that when I type, I don't just say, hi, you know, I'm looking for you to participate. Why will they participate in my podcast without me giving context or without giving parallel references as to why they should be on my podcast? So everybody, including you, is looking for why should I network with this person, right? When somebody says hello to you, you only accept if you think that is going to be beneficial to you or if you think this person is going to add value to your life or you're going to add value to that person's life. Am I right? So that is really important for you to understand that in today's world, you cannot take anybody's time for granted. So please uh, keep those templates ready in a Word document and you can use copy paste and you know kind of customize it when you're reaching out to a person. I'm just going to run a video. It's like hard. Maybe we'll do business someday. Uh, the gorgeous gourmet. That is catchy. Well, here's fine. Mm -hmm. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Well, that was so 
Oh, terrible. Horrible. Could not have gone worse. You spent 22 minutes and 47 seconds talking to a caterer. A caterer. Was interesting. Useless. The point of networking is to gather information to advance your career. Watch and learn. Step one, forge your boss. Your name, where you work, and one memorable fact. I'm Mark St. James. I work for Wilhelmina Slater. I once had a threesome with John Hamm and Mia Hamm. I called it the night of the ham sandwich. Oh, that's ridiculous. It's memorable. But it's a lie. Or is it? It is. Step two, gathering information. In order to get info, you're going to have to give info. You know why Heidi Klum never wears open-toed shoes? The trick is to make it sound juicy, but really mean nothing. Well, little piggies. I, uh, it's disgusting. I'm not even kidding about that. So what were you saying about next month's cover model? And most importantly, step three, the exit strategy. Get in, get info, get out. See, I can't wait to be rude. I mean, how do you just stop someone in the middle of a conversation without hurting their... Betty, could you just hold on one sec? Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, Amanda, I get it. Amanda. She's not coming back, and neither am I. I've given you all I have to give. No, Mark, we'll go. I'm not ready. Yes, you are. You're a mean, not so lean contact getting machine. Isn't that uh, very interesting? I did. <laughs> I'll just reiterate what was what were the three points that you know video kind of uh, showcase. I don't know how many of you have seen Ugly Betty. Uh, it's a great series, but how are uh, you know this is a person who doesn't really think she is good enough, and many times we also go through this when we are in a room full of let's say leaders or other people uh, who we are not able to relate to. Constantly we think, should I go? Should I approach? What will they think of me? What should I say? Um, will I say the right thing? These are the questions you go through, especially if you're not an extrovert or if you don't understand what's happening in the room. So the easiest way is to find something that can be common. Or, you know, sometimes people just talk about uh, pets, dogs, cats, you know, or do you or talk about children or talk about where do they work? The easiest questions would be, where are you from, for example, right? Um, that that's the, the easiest icebreaker because people start with where do they uh, you know where they live or they start talking about their uh, you know the place they live or the place they come from and then you can start relating to what uh, they really like or they don't like and then start a conversation so that's the easiest thing to do or where do you work if it's a mixed network then you can start with where do you work what do you do what what is your career ambition? How how did you get here? These are questions that you can definitely throw out there. But leave something memorable behind so that they understand you and they are able to recall. And what I usually practice and that has benefited me is after I meet and I come back, I always send a text or an email saying, we connected, right? This is what we are. Please keep in touch. Or LinkedIn, I mean, I will share, somebody had asked for my LinkedIn uh, uh, link, I will share right after uh, this session and on my social uh, network uh, links as well. Uh, but leave something memorable, say something that will retain in their memory forever. So when you meet them next, you're, you're also able to, you know, get them to recall what you told them. So that way it's easier to reconnect as well. Uh, give, get, give info to get info. You can't expect the person to have a monologue with you. You'll have to start the conversation. If you want to network, and this goes for any relationship, by the way, if you want a relationship with another person, you have to make that effort. You can't expect the other person to come and start conversation. It very rarely happens that somebody is seeing somebody standing in a corner of the room. And that happens in movies, by the way. So somebody approaches and then, you know, says, oh, how are you doing? I saw that you're sitting here. You're, are you lonely? And all of that happens only in, and especially in Bollywood. Otherwise, it doesn't happen, right? So you have to make that effort. Walk up to people. Nothing is going to happen. Nothing is right or wrong. At the most, the person may not talk to you again. So what? It doesn't matter, right? You just move on to the next person or you find another way to connect with this person later. So it's not the end of the world. 
please understand that going and speaking to another person is is actually the easiest thing if you have ice breaking questions in mind or you do some research let's say you're going and approaching a speaker on the panel right do some research about the person understand what they like what they don't like read something about the person so that you go are able to go and approach them and say i loved what you uh, you know said in the earlier panel or i loved your book i love the quote that you made in this paper i love the subjects that you teach you know it could be anything right or you can even say i didn't like this point of view that you that is also an icebreaker you don't have to always be nice and you know false that's not the objective of networking you can be yourself you can say that i don't agree with your point of view at all and why right then the person and will respect you the person will say oh why why is that okay so there are different ways to approach this and definitely the exit strategy is important uh, like how they showcase in the video if you see that you're not gaining anything from that conversation or the other person is fidgeting and not comfortable having the conversation at that point in time you just need to move away take a few step backs you know and then start uh, moving working the room otherwise right so as i said there is the art and science of uh, you know uh, networking itself building rapo uh, elevator pitches are very important guys if you're going to meet somebody let's say just for a minute they have like two minutes sometimes i have seen leaders say come walk with me right this is this is a normal practice because they don't have time to sit and do one on ones with you and because you're not part of their team but you want somebody to mentor you in your organization or you want somebody outside your organization to mentor you but they are in a you know event and they don't have much time so you can say you can say can i walk with you can i walk with you to the car can i walk with you to the you know uh, dining table or something like that and start pitching and that's just like you know exactly a minute or two it can't be more than that that's the attention span when for elevator pitches you need to be able to say who you are what you need and why do you, why should you network with them or why should they network with you exactly these three or four points you need and one as i said the memorable fact add that to it so that say i will connect with you later over linkedin or can i get your email id or your you know or your coordinate so that i can connect with you later and give you more details so that that works okay please understand networking etiquette which means you respect the other person that's the basics you respect the other person you're not barging into uh, somebody else's conversation you're not crowding them you're not uh, you know saying rude things about them you're you know you're respecting their time as well just because they give you the attention and time does not mean you hog the entire time also because it gets very uncomfortable for the person who's networking with you and nurture relationships right it's a very important you like we can't expect the other person to remember you throughout you have to be able to provide a nurturing kind of an effect for them which means keep in touch if you know their birthdays if you know something of importance then you can wish them on those days you can kind of you know uh, send an email or something of importance the way i i've, I've been in pr and uh, communication so the way i would uh, network with journalists which is very 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 tough uh, you know cohort to break in right what i was doing is i would send them information not just about my brand but about some other brand or an industry uh, research that we would have done for some other client i would give them that information which they can in turn use for their work right this is nothing to do with benefiting directly this is benefiting just the journalist so that is how i still have journalist friends in, in the in the industry so it's about kind of providing what the other person wants as well without always looking at what what do you gain it can't be a one sided relationship it can't be just take you have to give as well and as i mentioned earlier there is the science part of it if you're looking for a job if you're looking for mentoring if you're looking for guidance then your networking has to be very very targeted you can't have you can't go after let's say i need my you know network to be 10000 people that's not that cannot be the objective you have to be able to you know kind of line up people who really will benefit uh, your you know relationship or your networking you know goals as well so you need to go after certain cohorts like if you're going for mentoring go after women leadership uh, you know that cohort 
or if you're looking to mentor, then you look for college students or school students to mentor or people from underprivileged background. So that's how you kind of target and go after. Social media, again, I've never looked at likes and you know engagement uh, for myself, but definitely for the brands that I maintain. Uh, because once you start looking at that, then you start, look, you know, each post will uh, kind of deliver different uh, metrics, right? So you can't view your networking strength only based on the likes and dislikes and the engagement on your social media posts. But you need to measure it. You need to understand what kind of content is getting that attention that you're seeking. You need to know what is working, what is not working, and where you're posting, what kind of content are you posting on which platform. And in today's world, see, all of us are virtually meeting today, right? I can see a few faces. So I'm going to remember these faces. The faces that are not there on the video, I wouldn't remember because I, I will not be able to relate to the names at all, right? I can th see Tulasi on my, uh, you know, on my screen. So I'm going to, when, if I see her again in some other uh, forum, I'll be able to definitely, you know, relate to her. I can see Sri Lata, I can see Sunita, I can see Durga. So I'm just saying, so in a virtual world, put a try and put a face to the name. So it's easier for people to remember you. In It's so difficult to, in, you know, each of us meet so many people every day. It's difficult as it is to remember names and people. So in a virtual world, try and connect, make it a lot more human. Human, right? Make your own brand, humanize your own brand so that other people are able to relate to you. Yes, this is something that I always say it's a skill uh, that's not taught in schools, colleges, but it's definitely one of the most important skills that you need to develop. And I say this even from school kids, right? You have to be able to develop this uh, skill. It is definitely one of the most ignored and underutilized skill until a point where you realize, oh my God, I don't know people in this industry or I don't know people in this cohort, right? So start building it. It's not too late. It's the most required skill at any point in time of your career. It is not just the entry level. We as leaders, we, I mean, I always have a leadership cohort that I'm connecting with. I always have a women leadership cohort that I'm connecting with. I always have a mentee cohort that I'm connecting with. I'm connecting with uh, people who are in uh, in the NGOs because I'm passionate about that. I have a marketing cohort that I'm connecting with because that's my, you know, that's my function and that's my expertise. So I need to be part of different cohorts and to also be able to give time and energy and my point of view, you can't just be part of some WhatsApp group and not participate. That's like blasphemy as far as network networking is concerned, because otherwise they're not going, you're not going to be visible on that virtual platform. So ensure you participate in some way or the other. You don't have to have a point of view all the time. You can, you know, agree with somebody, you can like somebody else's post, you can like or dislike somebody else's post. Some way of participation is very important as far as virtual platform is concerned physical platform as well you need to be able to be visible in a room full of people right you need to maybe ask questions maybe you know try and understand a point of view or give your point of view or walk up to the speaker after the session is over and you know be visible in that and also work the room go and talk to your cohort talk to the colleagues that are there in the room and exchange notes so that you're again uh, making a mark in that room. Is there an algorithm in today's world? Just in time. I believe I've isolated the algorithm for making friends. Sheldon, there is no algorithm for making friends. Well, hear him out. If he's really onto something, we could open a booth at Comic-Con, make a fortune. See, my initial approach to Kripke had the same deficiencies as those that plagued Stu the Cockatoo when he was new at the zoo. <laughs> Stu the Cockatoo? Yes, he's new at the zoo. <laughs> it's a terrific book. I've distilled its essence into a simple flow chart that will guide me through the process. Have you thought about putting him in a crate while you're out of the apartment? Yeah. Yeah. A little grippy. Yeah, Sheldon Cooper here. It occurred to me that you hadn't returned any of my calls because I hadn't offered any concrete suggestions for pursuing our friendship. Yet perhaps the two of us might share a meal together. I see. Well, then perhaps you'd have time for a hot beverage. 
popular choices include tea, coffee, cocoa. I see. No, no, no. Wait, don't hang up yet. But what about a recreational activity? I bet we share some common interests. You can tell me an interest of yours. You, really? On actual horses? You tell me another interest of yours. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I have no desire to get in the water till I absolutely have to. Another interest of yours. Uh oh, he's stuck in an infinite loop. I can fix it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's interesting, but isn't ventriloquism by definition a solo activity? <laughs> yeah. Wait, tell me another interest of yours. Hmm. Is there any chance you like monkeys? What is wrong with you? Everybody likes monkeys. Hang on, Kripke. A loop counter and an escape to the least objectionable activity. Howard, that's brilliant. I'm surprised you saw that. Yeah. Gee, why can't Sheldon make friends? Kripke, that last interest strikes me as the least objectionable, and I would like to propose that we do that together tomorrow. Yes, I'll pay. You're just in time. So we saw that interesting video. It's one of my favorite scenes in Big Bang Theory. And uh, all of us know how desperate, you know, Sheldon is to make friends all the time and how he is uh, almost like until the last episode, you don't understand that he has, he really has the love and affection, but it always is a desperate attempt, right? So you, you could see that he's, but the point that he was making, like find a, you know, common, area of interest or you know these objectionable activity and all that really works in networking if you play it well but however you cannot be this desperate you need to have that loop you can't get into the loop and get stuck there so it is definitely there is no one algorithm to you know making friendship or making a network just go with the person's requirement and your requirement with the person and what you can give and take so that's all it takes. Be authentic, be sincere, be yourself, and at the same time, be a giving person when it comes to networking. I learned, uh, you know, from my mom actually about networking because I, I mean, she is always been this outgoing personality and, uh, you know, I would see that she could make friends with anybody. She could talk to anybody and, under, and talk about any subject under the sun. You know, there was absolutely no shyness. There's no question of whether, I mean, sometimes we all say, you know, Ma, why are you doing this? Why are you talking this? Sometimes it, it I mean, when you're younger, it's very embarrassing so with, with our parents. So you say, Ma, please keep quiet, keep quiet. You know, why are you talking to that person? Why are you talking to the stranger and all of that? But, you know, later you realize that's what networking is about. You're all the time talking to strangers. You're all the time, you know, going and exchanging information to your, uh, you know, somebody who you don't know from Adam. So, uh, that's something that I really learned from my mom, not to be scared, not to worry about what the other person is thinking, whether it's right or wrong, not being judgmental. She could talk to anybody under the sun. And the other thing is she would always exchange information and come back and tell us like, this is what the person is doing. Always praise the person, understand one good thing about the person, which also makes it yet another way to remember the person and to be able to go back to them when when you need to un to kind of recollect and you know make sometimes you, you if you meet somebody you forget their name right you don't know who you, somebody's coming and approaching you and you forget their name completely but when you start associating them with something good right it makes it a lot more easier to remember them and uh, you know that then it, they become part of your network for life Online and offline, I'm not going to read the chart, but uh, in today's world, you have to be hybrid, thinking hybrid. You need to be able to uh, get into both the worlds and be equally networked. You know, your online profile, I'm, I'm sure, uh, uh, Suganya, we had some session yesterday about LinkedIn, or and there are more sessions upcoming uh, in uh, this week, I think about how to keep your online profile updated, how to make it more effective. So please attend those and then I understand how that can be. Because in today's world, the first place people go and look for you is LinkedIn, right? They want to understand who you are through the LinkedIn profile because 
the authenticity of that profile is a lot better than let's say Facebook or you know Instagram or anywhere else because that's something very different, right? Uh, be part of like-minded groups, as I was mentioning. I'm part of you know the marketing groups, I'm part of communication groups, I'm part of NGO groups. That's something that I really like, and I, I I'm able to exchange information. I'm able to interact with that kind of content. So I am part of those groups over and above my LinkedIn page, right? So I kind of go and join groups that make more sense to me. And uh, the other side of it is meet people through other people. If you're looking for a specific connect, ask the person. You, If you go and see, you will see mutual connections on LinkedIn. You can ask a person who is a mutual connection to help you connect with the other person. Uh, so let the, and when you're in a physical environment, you know, it's not about meeting everybody in the room. It's about, you know, meeting people in the room and having that interaction, let the other person speak. Only then you will be able to understand who the other person is, what they really are, so that they're able to make the connection. And then you can definitely leave an impression by speaking about you also. Exchange stories, storification is definitely an art, uh, but in today's world, that's what helps in retaining information. So, you know, kind of give uh i recall that you know this happened with me or this happened with a friend's friend of mine uh, many times we actually introduce you know people to come and tell stories in networking sessions section i mean when i do uh, workshops so telling stories is part of uh, the workshop as well so when people come and say they faced an elephant in the forest and they didn't know how to you know get back and so that leaves a mark, right? Or they talk about how their child was, uh, you know, given a prize for something, then that's a story that they're saying. And therefore it becomes a lot more relatable and humanized. Uh, make a real connection, as I was saying, and this is definitely part of every networking. Uh, any person who's doing a session on networking will tell you, make it real, make it authentic. That's definitely one of the basic necessities, uh, right? For you to be authentic. Otherwise people don't like to, uh, talk to people who they are not able to connect, who they are not able to understand because of a false representation of them. And if you're an expert in something, please offer to help. Say that I understand that you're working on this aspect of marketing, finance, HR, whatever it may be. I know this and therefore, can I be part of your project? Can you? Can I do some, you know, uh, some part can i play a part in what you're writing or can i play a part in the thing or can i come and observe you and understand what you're doing it could be anything but if you're an expert please offer help and people definitely appreciate that again i'm not going to read this out but i we will share this later if you want some handout kind of a thing so beyond go beyond transactional exchange as i was mentioning earlier um Embrace diversity and inclusion. This is definitely one thing I want to tell all of you is that don't go and I've seen this happen uh, very often, uh, especially in a physical network uh, situation or a physical meeting. Go, the women go and join with the women. The men are on one side. That doesn't really, you know, that's not embracing diversity and inclusion. It does not expand your thinking. It does not expand your, uh, you know, knowledge. It doesn't expand your diverse uh, you know, understanding of what the world is also. So please don't go towards one side of the room. That doesn't help you. Um, and, uh, build relationships. I think I've said this enough, not just contacts. It's not about collecting, you know, business cards. It's not just about increasing your network on LinkedIn. It's about really understanding interests and challenges and aspirations. Engage with them regularly. Um, authenticity is something that I've told again enough. Please, please, please be yourself connections have connections with people of your own interest values and professional goals so that you know there is an end benefit uh, for both of you at the end of the day uh, leverage technology thoughtfully you know because technology you can just uh, you, you can just keep adding people you might be adding bots you might be doing anything but uh, use it effectively read about the person on their you know profile understand what networks they are part of and if you really want that connection and then wherever there is an opportunity to meet the person face to face later you know take that opportunity and put a face to the name also right i'm not going to run this full video i'm just warning you just a little bit for you to understand uh, that there is no script or framework and there is how not to work the room also
Hey. Hey. So I was just scoping out the vibe of the room, trying to figure out who to talk to. I noticed that you guys were standing um, with a little gap in between each participant of the conversation. So I thought you'd be more welcoming to a newcomer. <laughs> of course. I'm Dave. Um, but I promise that I will be slow and make a meaningful connection with both of you. And I am not just looking for a new client or an investor. Oh, you know what we we're just saying. So I have like a list of topics that I'm willing to talk about. Um, one of them is the latest sporting event <laughs> for the stocks. The stocks that they go up, but then they come uh, right up back down. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and now I respond with a piece of conversation that's unique to me, like a, a restaurant tip or my opinion on a political event, but it won't be too edgy uh, of an opinion. I understand. So you can see how the person is making an effort to network by force fitting himself between two people. And as I said, there's no framework. This is just, uh, you know, ways to get into a networking. It doesn't, as I said, you need to be able to customize your approach as, as far as the person is concerned and as far as that room is concerned. So you'll have to be able to read the room. You'll have to be able to make the right conversation and not just have a list of topics you know, that uh, people may or may not be comfortable talking about, right? This guy is saying that I I can talk about politics, I can talk about sports, I can talk about restaurant tips, and that might not just even be on their minds at that point in time because they are having a conversation and this guy is just butting in. So read the room, you know, understand what the conversation is about and then give your point of view. That's what this video is about. I think, Sukanya, I don't know if you're sharing this uh, presentation by people, but you can share the videos for sure later so that they can go through it in uh, detail. Um, also understand that different levels, when you enter the career, uh, you know, then you your needs are different, right? Your networking needs are different. It's about building relationships. It's about understanding your uh, your function. It's about understanding the pillars of your function or what are the opportunities in your area of interest. As you move ahead, your you know leaders have a very different requirement. It's about strengthening relationships. It's about understanding industry problems. It's about understanding people issues. It's about growth. It's about business growth. It's a, it could be very different. Managers of managers, again, they have a very different. It's about creating the strategic relationships, not just internally, but externally as well. And executives, again, I mean, executives is the most difficult because they're lonely at the top, but they also need that uh, cohort of their level. You know, they need to network. They're, for them, it is more about understanding the top position and how to run a company and what is that that they can learn from another leader or from another industry and stuff like that. Or about being visible, right? It could be anything about being visible on certain platforms or getting awards. It can be anything for executives and leaders. So uh, please understand that they, you can't go and copy somebody who's at a very different level and then achieve what you want in networking. Please understand your requirement, your level, what will benefit you at that particular level, and then aspire for the next level. Uh, this is just, I'm sharing my, uh, you know, experience. So I have like a strategic network, operational and personal network. Um, I'm part of CMO networks, ex-colleagues, women networks, CXO networks on uh, LinkedIn. And just like how we are here today, aspire for her, her key women's web, because I'm interested in enabling women and young women, nurturing them. I'm part of industry forums, which is more part of the strategic network, because it's important for my business and my uh, you know, function and my leadership, you know, to showcase my thought leadership. So that's where uh, the industry forums come in. The CXO networks on LinkedIn provides me with the latest in my uh, area of interest and what the other leaders are doing, what are they achieving so that I'm able to at least look at that and see where I fit in. The other personal network is I have travel groups. I always make at least one trip with girlfriends and therefore I have a very fun loving group that I am often part of. Um, there are cause related women empowerment groups like Hopeworks, Vedika Mirror, where I mentor people, mentor girls. So I have kind of compartmentalized my network and of sometimes there is an overlap. The Venn diagram shows that there is an overlap between 
the personal network strategic people from the strategic network can become great friends of mine from personal network or to you know some business that they are running and a part of that work as well so there is a overlap but you need to be able to compartmentalize and not mix up the requirements that you are after therefore keep that in mind um the you know i have been very successful in not going and hunting for a job because of my networking uh skills that i developed early on uh, where i understood that this is really an important skill for me to develop my first job was where i studied computers people absorbed me and uh, you know i did my job the next job came from a friend's friend uh, by through uh, you know a reference and the next one is one of i was just talking to a college friend my requirement at that point in time was to do a part time job like i had to take, take care of my son so i didn't want to do a full time job so i was just talking to people and then one of my friends said that they couldn't attend the interview but they this was a part time job and therefore you know that job came to me so and then there was another i just walked in i was selling something at that point in time i walked in and the business i spoke about what they will benefit from uh what i was selling and they saw the potential in me and they gave me a job and the next one was through a journalist because i was in pr and comms and he saw that i would fit into that other job and therefore he referred me and uh, you know the previous one i went included the previous one the previous the one before that uh, a family friend uh, was working with uh, ibm and she saw that there was a need in the organization and she saw me fitting into that she referred me and therefore i i got the job so i've never consciously gone looking out for a job it's always been through referrals through connections across my network and i have nurtured those people throughout my life all these people continue to be my friends even now today right so if i need something i can definitely go back to them and ask them for a referral for somebody else in marketing or communications or whatever it may be uh, the reason i put the podcast photo on top is again this is another way that i have been able to build network in the cmo and brand building leadership category as well i've reached out to people on uh, linkedin i have told them my purpose i've told them how they will benefit that's something that you need to keep in mind because you need to always state how the other person is going to benefit as you grow i'm saying not in the initial years but as you grow into a career they need you you don't have to be direct but you can indirectly talk about how they will benefit from being in part of your network or how you would benefit from being part of their network because people like to give as much as they like to take as well okay women this is what we are here for why is it important for women to invest in networking and why is it slightly different from uh, men i have seen men are less shy when they go and talk to another person they are able to go and you know approach anybody and maybe it's genetic maybe it's not or the way people are brought up i don't know but uh, the it is important for women to invest in networking because this cohort building is really important for the years to come because that is only going to help us overcome this gender bias it's going to help us break through the old boys club and this is something i often uh come across even in leadership um you know webinars or workshops like where women are still talking about how they are the only women in the room right so it's important to keep building this cohort so that at the top and at the bottom and in the middle there is enough women uh that are supporting each other that are you know helping build each other helping you know kind of uplift each other so please invest your time and energy in networking in helping each other in helping uh, each other access the right resources and opportunity uh, create that support and uh, you know then you're able to be also build in influence leadership opportunities if you see some opportunity come your way and you're not able to take it at that point in time find some woman who is you know whom you can help pass on that opportunity instead of just saying no to a recruiter just pass on that opportunity to some other woman in your network or if you're if you see some resource that is going to be of benefit to another woman please share it with at least 10 women so that they also benefit don't just keep it to yourself so that so please as i said take some time out that's really important in networking take some time out of your regular so it's okay to calendarize it it's okay to programmatically approach this 
maybe Saturdays or Friday evenings, go and, you know, go through some 10 profiles on LinkedIn and make those connections or go and attend events that are important to you uh, that can actually, you know, help uh, uh, you network, go identify the many, 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 many events happening in today's world. Go and attend your industry events, go attend women network events, go and attend um, you know, fun events. It doesn't have to be all serious all the time, even fun events. Or uh, if your interest is in art, uh, then go and attend events. And for those in uh, Bangalore, I'm giving the reference of Chitrakala Parishad or, you know, any other event, go and attend some theater event, go and attend a dance class. It can be anything, but please invest time and uh, understand that your network is your net worth uh, over a period of time. You will see the intangible uh, benefits of having a good net network. So happy networking. Thank you for listening to me. So you... we can open for Q&A. So anyone can unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. And we got a question in chat here uh, from Parvani. Okay. So she asked, uh, let's say we are at an after seminar session and we are interested to connect to the speaker. But it, but it is informal, like in a group of people. And how do we start a conversation where this, there is a person who tries to take over the conversation every time someone starts to speak? Yeah, I think if you are very clear, you form the question in your mind and you give the person some time to speak. I mean, whoever it is, is not allowing other person to speak. And then you can button and say to add on. Right. When you say to add on to what she asked, she's asked, then the other person doesn't have the opportunity to say that something else. Right. Or you say, I also have another question or you can just put your hand up. It doesn't matter if it's a physical environment. Put your hand up and say, I would like to ask a question once you're finished answering her question. So I think there are ways to kind of be very strategic and not be rude at the same time. This is what I would do. I'm just sharing my experience, guys. We have Emma's hand rise. Emma, you can go ahead and ask your question. Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon. I'm Hi. Emma from Kerala. And uh, yeah, I've been on a break for more than a couple of like um, 10 to 12 years by now. I worked in a BPO before. And the thing is right now I'm settled in Kerala and uh, it's a very remote area. Okay. And I don't have enough professional network um, uh, women to network here. And uh, so I would like to connect. I would like to know what is trending, what is happening in the B world, in the happening world. But I don't know how. I'm just stuck here. And uh, recently I got to know about uh, Aspire for Her and, you know, uh, tried exploring. So this session was really helpful. And uh, I would like to ask you a question uh, like, uh, are there any forums uh, that I can attend, I can connect uh, with people who lead, like women who lead? I would like to, uh, you know, uh, connect with women. Hmm. There are lots uh, of forums. Women, uh, uh, network with women, that's what I'm Yeah, there are a lot of forums, uh, Hema. I don't know which part of Kerala you're in, but uh, there are things that happen in Cochin for sure, because I think NASCOM has, uh, you're in IT, if I got it right. You want yes, to um, yes. Uh, yes. And there is NASCOM has got online forums as well. CI has uh, you know online forums as well. Asucham has it. So each one of those, and I think Kerala uh they has their own IT forums also through NASCOM. Just go check out the NASCOM uh, web page. They will have those chapters uh, where you will be able to go go and join as members and participate or you know take part in webinars which they are running and you, in today's world you don't have to have local chapters also you can join in any of the webinars that NASCOM is having and then uh, later connect with the speaker and the other attendees you know that's how you will be able to improve your network and as for her themselves have returning programs you can be part of that uh, there are many, many, and many organizations who are part of returning programs. Like if you're looking at returning to work, then, uh, you know, Accenture, Capgemini, I don't know if Infosys, all of them have returning programs, Zoho, uh, you know, uh, for women returnees, especially, you can be, you can go par be part of their career networks. Uh, they will have the, it on their web pages, right? If you go to the, each of these uh, organizations web page, you'll be able to then, you'll be led to those career pages where you can submit your resume and connect with those people. You can see who the HR 
people are of those organizations and then just ping them and uh, share your uh, expertise. Like, don't share your resume to start off with. Just write a small paragraph about yourself and say why you would like to be part of the organization and how you know there is a connection between you and that organization. So that customization helps uh, recruiters relate to you better. Thank you so much. Yeah. Apart from that, uh, uh, yeah, I saw Namita's question. We, I think, aspire for her has just started. Uh, maybe you could share the link, uh, Suganya later. Uh, aspire for her has just started something for the people for women in finance. Yeah, uh, women so in banking. Have, yeah, on banking, and you can definitely be part of that. And uh, yes, and LinkedIn also has a lot of banking, uh, uh, you know, groups, BFSI groups. You can uh, go and join and. Uh, Look at what's happening latest in the industry and follow people. See, that's another thing. You need to follow people in the industry or an online platform so that you're able to get what is ha happening. And that's how you, you know, build your network also. Yeah. And uh, even the there are few forums like Meet Me and uh, Reddit, Reddit, uh, Reddit, uh, so those are have uh, those conduct the online event sessions. I remember like there are groups for like I'm part of our learner like our program. So they always conduct the uh, events uh, in all the cities. So you can join that also again. Absolutely, I think yeah. Even uh, uh, Cora has there's so much so many of this. Yeah, Cora. Uh, yeah, Cora has and. Uh, even in Facebook, there are so many groups. Uh, like GitHub also has a yeah. lot of events. The law, see, go and uh, check out events in your cities or near your city, uh, guys. So you will be able to see the smaller events that are happening, uh, you know, in and around. Which part of uh, Kerala are you in uh, Hema? Sorry, I'm just going back to Hema for a second. Uh, which part of Kerala are you? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm near to Calicut. Not Calicut, Calicut exactly, is... but it's Malapuram. It's known as Malapuram. Okay, but I think you have accessibility to Calicut, right? So you can travel once in a month to attend some event or something. So that should be doable. Yeah, sure. Me. Not a problem, but it's uh, like a uh, three hours journey oh. from here to Calicut. Yeah. Well, in Bangalore, so, it's the same for from one end of the city to another end of the yeah. city. Yeah, because of the traffic, you know, yeah. I can connect well with Hayama because even I'm staying in Velur. <laughs> it's like in between but Bangalore. Velour has, but Velur has colleges and, uh, you know, that way it is much better. And, yeah, yeah, we don't have IT uh, networking here. We have uh, medical and focus but, on medical and college. That's right. Yeah. And uh, I have a personal question like, uh, our introvert uh, can go and network because this, this is like a Introverts are really like uh, for the initiation, like it's really difficult, right? So, how uh, one can break that, uh, or what are the ways that uh, it will not exhaust the energy, but also they can network? Suganya, so, I'll tell you, I, I, I am an introvert. <laughs> you may not believe it, okay? But I, I, am, I don't go and make friends easily, right? But when it comes to professional requirement, I make an effort. So there is, as I said, the compartmentalization. I have very few select friends who I really, you know, cherish and uh, I can go to them for anything and they will drop everything and come for me. That's a different network. But when it comes to professional network, you know how I approach it, right? Like the way I speak or the way you, I, I'll, you know, we have that, we have already created a friendship in AFH. So that's how you kind of don't let that quality, that quality is not bad right it's not it's nothing wrong to be an introvert that's who you are that's who you need to be and you can't break that and change yourself to just build your network approach it in you know kind of look at who you really want to be part of who who you which are those people who you want to network with and approach it programmatically go after them write to them approach them in uh, events and say, I'd like to talk to you. Can you spare two minutes? And that's all it takes. And and introduce yourself as you are. Don't use words like I'm an introvert. You know, I didn't know. That's not what people, people just want to know who you are as a person are, right? What is your requirement? And as I said earlier, it's just those two minutes people have. So understand that and give, uh, you know, aspects of you 
only in those terms, right? Give them what you need, what you what are you looking for? And then I would like to connect with you because I'm interested in this area. It's as simple as that. At the same time, they are they respect you because you're not wasting their time by telling the full story and you know, because if it's in an event, right? Uh, but if it's a you know casual, you're going out for lunch, then it's a different conversation. You know, I thought I couldn't speak to you, you know, but I really feel comfortable talking to you. You can say even things like that. It doesn't matter. As I said, it, there is no right or wrong. Just approach it the way you would like to approach it, but approach it. Don't be scared of approaching. That's what it takes. Taking that first step is what it, it takes to build your network. So we got two questions here. Yeah. In an interview, GD, there was a person who was talking at the beginning, like when the HR manager from the company complete asking question without even a two second gap. This person used to start giving his or opinion like a race uh, where every second matters. Is this a good approach or is it better to give others also time between? It's definitely wrong to go. Nobody appreciates a person who's going to hog all the time. Right, the interviewer will definitely make note of that because these are softer. Why do they do a GD? Right, they they are looking at understanding you as a person, understanding your ability to kind of you know be able to speak on the topic on the spot and then showcase that ability. Right, so that's what the GD is about. That's the objective. That's very clear. But if one person is going to hog every person's time, then that's not seen as a great quality and. Most of the time, you know, if the interviewer is not tired, they will not select that person. So you might just want to wait, let the person finish and say, I have a point of view and like, you know, I could, you know, thank you for, you might actually want to thank the person and saying, thank you for bringing that point of view, but I agree, I don't agree or whatever it is. That will give you a benefit of uh, being special and, uh, you know, uh, stand out from that crowd in the room also. I hope I answered that question, uh, Deepti. Most of the time, if you want to connect to a person on LinkedIn, they don't accept your request even after adding a note. Uh, well, that's on them, <laughs> right? It's not your fault. Don't take it personally. It's okay. Sometimes it so happens that, uh, and it happens to all of us. It's not something that happens at one level only. It happens across levels, across your career. Even if you're successful, sometimes people are busy. And sometimes people are not active on LinkedIn to see that you have asked for it. They'll go and accept your request after, like, say, a month or so. Okay? Or they don't look at it. They do that, like, very periodically, maybe once in two weeks or something. People have their own way of, uh, you know, approaching LinkedIn. Um, so yeah, it's not on you. Don't really take it to heart. It's all right. Just move on to the next person with an, uh, with a similar, uh, you know, expertise that you're looking for. A like, lot of people, lots and lots of people in this world for you to network with. So don't worry. Thank you, Farisha. I think Farisha and, uh, Hema, you can be friends. You're from the same town. She just put it there. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Actually, to tell you a story, like uh, I just deleted my LinkedIn profile. Oh, damn. Uh, like two months back. Why? <laughs> I'm just trying to. Just got too frustrated. I, I didn't know. know how to connect. I was like, you know, stuck here. So no, I'm I just so have to sorry that you had to go through that, but I don't think that's the end of the world. I'm sure you will do better now. This gives me hope. I'm this platform sure. gives me I'm hope. Sure. I'm sure there is enough hope in this world. How to form networks in the initial stages when you're still progressing and might not have anything to offer to the party. So Nidhi, it is about learning also, right? It's not always about offering some expertise. Um, but you can, uh, I know of interns who have done great work for me and I have gone back to them, uh, in fact, to come and participate in some NGO work that I'm doing and they have come back to me and they're they're very good. In, in today's world, all of you are very good with creativity or you know, a certain aspect in technology, which is not uh, very well known to the older generation. So you can offer that you can, uh, but you don't have to necessarily offer something. You can always say, I would like to learn something from you. And that is also quite acceptable. How to politely ask for endorsement in LinkedIn to ex colleague. Uh, again, uh, Gen C, it is give some point of reference. 
do you remember that we worked on this project? Would you be able to endorse me on that? I'm looking, this recommendation will help me, you know, uh, I'd like to put this on LinkedIn and, you know, whatever it is, you can just give that, that personal connect. Since it's an ex-colleague, you will definitely have a personal connect and you can, you know, bring in that uh, reference and ask for, uh, uh, or, you know, usually I, I will give you a trick also. What works is give them a template because people are lazy to write. Okay. Give them what you want them to write and uh, ask them to fill in, uh, so, you know, customize it to you or something you, they would like to add or delete. And most often you will get that recommendation. That's the easiest way to do it. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. And should, uh, like, uh, if they are on the same level as us, then should we also give endorsement? Uh, uh, yeah, is that what it. they would expect? No, if they ask for it, you can give. Otherwise, there's no compulsion. But if you, but it's nice to give, right? Because you're returning some... Uh, a favor and you're returning something nice so it's nice it's like a return gift too. so it's good to give but it's not okay. necessary okay thank you you're welcome thank you. so Sri Devi will raise the hand uh, Sri Devi can you ask your question now yeah, I was just asking about this uh, uh, endorsements. And one more thing, is it uh, is it okay to put all the certifications and everything on the LinkedIn profile? Is it a must? No, it's not a must. Nothing is mandatory in this world. No, so, government is okay. asking, but you, no. it's good to put. Okay. Uh, so is it like our resume speaks more or our LinkedIn profile speaks more? Which Both. one? Both. Both. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because people receive, I've worked in the recruitment industry. So the, the LinkedIn profile is definitely one of the first points of contact for them. They do go see and the ATS, which is the, you know, automated uh, system also goes and picks up from your LinkedIn profile or as well, if you're given the link. And therefore, it's important to keep it updated, which is what I mentioned in the session as well. Keep your online profile updated. And if you have certifications that are relevant to your job, definitely put them on, highlight them or whatever is required. There are different sections in uh, LinkedIn, which uh, people pick from, which is your achievements or which is your, uh, you know, uh, there, is, there is a separate thing for awards. If you have won awards, then go and put it there. Put it as part of your resume also so that it gets picked up by the ATS. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So we have past six minutes. So <laughs> once again, I remind everyone to apply for the job fair. And as we draw this enlightening session to a close, I would like to take a moment to express uh, our heartfelt gratitude to our exceptional guest speaker, Bhuvana. Your insights, uh, wisdom, and the wealth of knowledge you have shared with us today have been truly invaluable. Uh, your passion for networking and your dedication uh, to in helping us build a stronger connection is evident in every word you have spoken. Uh, your ability to inspire and engage our audience has left a lasting impression on all of us. Uh, your real-world examples and your, all those videos uh, and the practical advice have provided with valuable tools uh, to enhance our networking skill and achieve greater success in our personal and professional life. Uh, with this, we close the session with heartfelt thanks uh, for, uh, for our guests and our dear participants. Thank you, everyone. Keep on attending all the upcoming sessions. Thank you. Thank you, Sugarnya. Thank you so much, uh, Aspire, for her, for you know bringing everybody together for an important part of their life and an important part of their career journey. I wish everyone the very best, and I'm sure all of you will have a new lens put on as far as networking is concerned. Thank you so much once again. Have a lovely day. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you.